All right. Hey, folks. So today's topic is going to be drop sets. Now, the reason that I'm creating this video partly is for you guys as my YouTube audience. And also another part is that this is going to be a reference video for my actual clients if they need an explanation of how to do drop sets or how rather how I do drop sets and how I plan them. So let's begin and let me talk you through what drop sets are, why they're used and how I use them in my routines for my clients and why. Okay, so firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, pop them down below. If you like the content, please do like the video, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, it all helps. I'm trying to grow the channel, trying to get it to 3K followers, hopefully by the end of the summer. So help me out. All right, let's go on to the use case. So what we're talking about is drop sets. Now, drop sets have a very rich tradition in bodybuilding circles. They've been around for decades. It's a great way to extend the set. It's a great way to get more work in. It's a great way to put more emphasis on a muscle. And the way that we're going to use them is we're going to use them in the context of hypertrophy, so a bodybuilding routine, or in a hypertrophy part of a strength-based routine. So some of you are familiar with my work, know that I also work with a sort of a semi-conjugate style of training for my strength athletes. And we can also use these concepts to add useful hypertrophy stimulus, even to a strength-based routine. It's not for strength work, but certainly for the hypertrophy part of a strength training routine, you can add this in. It works great. Second use case is adding volume when we're time limited. Now, this is something which I come across all the time, and it's a valid point. You know, people have a certain amount of time allocated to train. Most people have some sort of a limit. Not everyone can train six days a week. People have responsibilities, so they want to progress onwards. And when they can't increase the intensity anymore, so they're tapped out on intensity, they're going to failure, they're going to, they're doing all the hard, safe sets. Then the next choice is, okay, we need to add some volume to increase stimulus on a muscle. And the final use case is simply variety. It's good to switch things up every now and again. It stimulates growth. So those are the use cases. And with that in mind, if you're here, you're trying to learn about drop sets or you're a client of mine and I've told you to do drop sets, this is how we do them. So how are they done? Essentially, the very first set of a pair of drop sets is just a regular set, okay? It's just a regular normal set your first straight set in the rep range you're working in. So whether that's five to 10, 10 to 20, whatever you're working in, okay? Then you immediately drop down to around half the weight. That's my recommendation, okay? There'll be people out there who want to do things differently, okay? It's fine, but my recommendation is drop to half the weight. I find that's the best way to make sure I have enough reps in the second set that I actually get a good stimulus. So first rep, go to the rep range you're working with and go to failure or close to failure, whatever you're working, whatever sort of RIR or whatever you're working with, okay? Do a first hard set, stimulative set. Immediately drop the weight to around half the weight and then straight away do your second set. The second set should be an attempt to continue the set in roughly the same rep range. So you're aiming high. Right? You don't want the first set to be a nice stimulative set of 15 and the second set because you insisted on keeping the weight high, you don't want that to be a set of three. That's not a set. At that stage, it's not a set. You want it to be a decent set of like eight to 12, okay? So that's a couple of sets. And if you do it right, you will feel like you've done two sets. And that's a really good way to know if you've done it right or not. You'll feel like you've done two sets. Like if you do a drop set correctly, it won't just feel like one set with a bit tagged on the end. It'll feel like two sets. You've just been smashed with two sets in the time it took you to do one. So that's what you're looking for. It's the feel, okay? Now, some nuances. So they, this technique tends to work the best with pin-loaded stacks where you can quickly change your weight. Now, you can also do it with plate-loaded stacks if you've got a partner. You can do it with um, dumbbells, you know, if you have them both available to, to you. You can do them with preloaded barbells. That's another way of doing it. My gym that I go to has preloaded barbells. So I can have a 30 kilo barbell and a 20 kilo barbell or a 15 kilo barbell next to each other. Um, but you have to be able to change the weight quickly. Now, 
they don't lend themselves well to cardiovascularly demanding exercises. So squats and deadlifts for drop sets would be absolutely brutal. The fatigue that it would generate in your supporting muscles would make the movement dangerous. So in a squat, if you went straight to failure or close to failure, and then you took it, you went to a drop set, your lower back might be the limiting factor there rather than your quads. And that might make the exercise of the drop set potential dangerous. So you don't necessarily want to do it in large multi joint, multi muscle movements where you're cardiovascularly limited and you're limited by support structure muscles, because that could get quite dangerous quite quickly. My personal favorites are leg curls, chest presses, leg extensions, regular barbell curls or bicep curls, tricep extensions. Those are some of my personal favorites, but you know, get creative. I mean, I'm not saying you have to restrict yourself to that. Get creative, do what you like, but ensure that you can change the weight quickly. And the third thing is, if you are not yet at the place where you can fully focus on both sets, it's a waste. When I was first coaching, I used to really dislike drop sets because typically speaking, whenever I saw somebody doing a drop set, the second set would be a waste. So it wouldn't be two sets. It would be one set and meh. And the thought of somebody doing the second set would put them off working hard on the first set. Is it For some people, if you're not truly in touch with your training and really intense, and most beginners aren't going to be, and that's not a slight on them, it's just facts. If you're not really fully in tune with your body, in tune with your training, the second set may well put you off working hard on the first one. So then you've wasted the second set, you've wasted the first one, you've not really gained anything from doing the technique. So you have to be sufficiently motivated and focused and disciplined to give it your all on both sets, which also means you have to be cardiovascularly decent as well. There's no point in you being gassed after the first set. So you just can't do the second set justice. Well, in that case, you've not done the equivalent of two sets. You've done a set and a meh. And the meh might have just ruined the first set as well. So for that, it might be counterproductive for you. You have to be ready to do these drop sets. If they're done well and they're done properly, they are brutal. So that's how you know if you've done it right. I can do two pairs of leg curls, so four sets all together, and I'm just destroyed. My hamstrings are done. If you can't work to that level of intensity, you might not be ready for these yet, and you might need to just put focus on making sure that first set is done right as a regular straight set. So some nuances before we move on. Now, some examples. So let's say your first set is 100 kilo on an arbitrary exercise, set one, 100 kilos for 11 reps, which is as close to failure as you want to work, okay, whatever that is for you. Then you take a rest period, which should be next to zero, just enough time to change the weight. Maybe enough time to reach to the side, change the pin stack and go back. Then you do a second set and that'll be with roughly half the weight. So we're looking at about 50 kilos for a set of eight. And then that's when you rest two or three minutes as usual. So that's how these two sets work. And they're counted as two sets in this example, because you've done a set of 11, immediately done a set of eight. It should feel like you've done two sets if you've done it right. If you've, if it, if you can do that and it doesn't feel like you just hit yourself with two sets, then you didn't do it right and you need to practice that a little bit. But that's how it should go. So the next thing we need to look at is how do we count this? Because we're doing this usually with the sole aim of increasing volume to increase stimulus, okay? As we established at the beginning. So in terms of how to count this, if you've done this right and it feels hard and it feels productive and your second set has had a decent amount of reps in it, so somewhat similar to the first set, if you've done it right, then that, sh that pairing should count as two separate sets in terms of counting volumes for the course of the week. And you might repeat set one and set two there for set three and set four after a two, three minutes rest. So that means you've done four sets. In the time, it would have taken you to do two regular straight sets. So that is quite a large increase of volume. You've doubled the volume in what is the same amount of time, which is great. So, but it, it, you have to understand it hinges on, and I'll say it over and over again, it hinges on you doing the sets to the right intensity and it feels hard. It feels like two sets. If not, you've not done it right. It won't be counted as two sets. So 
that's how I count it. So every single set in the drop sets is counted as its own individual set. So if I task you with six drop sets, that is three pairs. It is not six pairs. That would be ridiculous. Okay. If I task you with four sets, that's two pairs, right? It's always counted like that as long as you do it correctly. Now, in terms of how this fits into a typical routine, so this is a very typical scenario for you guys, for my clients. Let's say we've got somebody who's doing 12 sets of chest across two sessions per week. So they're on a four sessions altogether, very typical upper lower, upper lower, right? Pretty normal, yeah? Each session is currently taking between 60 to 75 minutes. It's about the top end of time that they can afford to devote to the gym. Otherwise, the wife will get annoyed at home, kids will be angry, and everything will go to hell, right? So we're at the top end of the time available. How do we now increase the volume, assuming the client needs more volume? He's doing everything else right. He's eating right. He's sleeping right. He's adding weight. He's working hard, but he just simply needs more volume. Well, let's have a look at how it fits into a routine. So this is, let's say, a typical routine. You might go with a bench press for 3 by 5 to 10 incline dumbbell bench for three by 10 to 20, cable crossover and machine chest press for, again, three sets each. So that is three, six, nine, 12 sets, as we said. Now, what we can do, if we want to increase the volume a little bit for say the next block of training, we could transform the cable crossover and the machine chest press because they're pin loaded to cable crossover for four sets. So that's two pairs and the machine chest press for four sets. So that's two pairs. That gives us 14 sets. We've added an extra two sets on. So voila, we've gone from 3-3-3-3 three, 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 three to 3-3-4-4. Three, three, four, four, and that gives us our extra sets. Fantastic. We're, we're good. Okay, does that work out? Yeah, 8 plus 6. Yeah, 14 sets. Great. And again, if we've done it right, if we're working hard, if we're able to exert the right amount of effort, across the drop sets with the rest periods, if we are immediately dropping the weight, if we are dropping it sufficiently so we can get a good number of reps in, we're working hard on the first set and the second set, we're not distracted by our cardiovascular system, we're able to focus, then great. We have just added in two more sets for want of a better, you know, for, for all effects and purposes, we've added in two more sets. And we've actually reduced the time commitment in the gym because we've gone from the time equivalent of three sets each to actually roughly two sets each in two pairs. So we've automatically banked time and done more volume. It's a very, very good way of doing things, adding volume in. Uh, and in my experience, it, it tends to work out pretty well. So some concluding thoughts. This is a very high skill technique to add volume. I don't do this until I'm confident that the trainee can handle it and they can put in a good effort. So if I've given you a drop set, it means I'm confident in your ability to focus on the set at hand. Also, use this when you need to add more volume or you're time limited. You must stay safe. Don't try and do this with potentially dangerous exercises like free bar squats and deadlifts. Um, I do have one client doing um, cluster sets on squats, which is brutal. Um, but credit to him, he's doing very well on that. He's, he's liking it. And if the second set distracts you, then drop the technique altogether. Don't do the drop sets if you can't fully focus on set one and set two. If you are just in such poor cardiovascular condition that after you've done your first set, all you want to do is sit down, breathe, and cry, then you're not ready for drop sets. It is an advanced bodybuilding technique which requires some discipline, some conditioning, and some effort. So if you can hack that, then you can take advantage. Now, if you can't hack that, then odds are it's probably not for you because you're not at that level yet. So I would focus on getting stronger on the basics and probably just working harder on the sets that you are doing. So you, rather than adding volume, add intensity and just work harder. Um, that will probably bridge the gap until you're ready for this. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call it there, but um, great technique. I, I love using drop sets. If you try them out, they just give you such a good pump, such a good stimulus. Um, they feel great and they are a really good way of racking up volume. I find the fatigue that I generate from a couple of drop sets 
is so strong that I'm going to lose reps on any subsequent sets that I do for that body part in the rest of the session. And that's how I know I've really fatigued the muscle. I've really disrupted the muscle. So it's a great technique. It, it definitely feels, if you do it right, like you've done a couple of sets rather than just one set. So it's well worth it. I utilize this technique a lot and uh, I'm going to be following it with other techniques that I use too, just to add density to uh, workouts. Okay, I will call it there. Hopefully that was informative. Take care.